Hello, and welcome to the next video in this Craft CMS tutorial series. In this video, we're going to work on two global elements, the header and the footer, and making them editable in Craft CMS. So let's get started. So here in the header, we have a link to the home page, and we should make sure this always goes to the home page. So let's edit our template here, and let's just edit the index.twig file in the templates directory. So this is where we have the header. And here is that logo, which links to dot slash. We don't need this anymore. Let's just make this always be the site's root URL or base URL. So we can do that by typing site URL. And for the alt text here, why don't we just make this be the site's name? So we can do this. And the site name is configured when you set up Craft CMS, but I'll show you how to edit it in Craft as well. If you go to Settings, Sites, here is the default site. So you can have different sites for different uh, languages or locations, um, but by default, you just have one. So let's click into this. And this is the site's name. So that's all we're accessing in the template. So if we save this and refresh, this should always go to home. So even if we're in a stories page, this should go all the way back to the home page. And it does, so that's perfect. So the next thing is the navigation. We should make this editable in Craft so you can add additional navigation links and change where they go to, change the ordering of them. So let's work on that. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a new matrix field for the navigation links. So let's go to settings, fields, new field. And we'll call this nav links. Let's make it a matrix field. And we will just call it link. Create a new block type in uh, the matrix field and call it link. So the first field is going to be a plain text field called link text. Let's make this field required and we can leave everything else default. The second field will be link destination. And we want them to be able to select an entry on the site that this link should go to. So let's choose a field type of entries and they can choose a general page. They can choose a single page like the home page, for example, or they can choose any story on the site. So we'll limit it to one because each link should only go to one place. And we'll choose select an entry. So let's also make this one required and then save. So now that we have a new nav links matrix field, let's go into settings, globals, and let's create a new global set for the navigation. So we'll call it navigation or actually let's call it header because we might add extra stuff to this later on. So this will be called header and we'll create a new tab here. We'll just call this content for now and we'll drag nav links onto it. So before we save this, you see there's nothing about globals in this side nav because we haven't created any global sets or fields yet. But as soon as we save this, we now have a globals link over here. So let's click this. And you can see we have our header global set and we have one field, nav links. So let's add a few links. We know that we have stories and our gear. This goes to the stories listing page and this goes to the our gear uh, general page. So let's go ahead and create a link called stories. We'll select an entry. And we know that this is single, we call it tales from the trail. That's the stories listing page. If we just look at that again here real quick, that's the name of this page. That's what we titled it anyway, and it's a list of stories. So that's fine for that one. And the second one will be our gear. And that will link to a general page called our gear. So let's go ahead and save this. Now let's go to the template again in the code. And this is our nav right here, and we have two links hard-coded. So let's leave only one here, and let's create a for loop. 
So for link in header, because that's the global set name, that's what's available to us in any template now because we made it a global set. So header dot nav links, because that's the name of our matrix field. And we want to get all of the nav links within that matrix field. So we have to do dot all. And we'll just loop through those. And let's just leave this blank for a moment. So you can see that it's doing two separate links, one and two. And now let's actually put the right content in. So each link has a link text field, which is that plain text field we created. And then each link has a link destination or an entry that it links to. So let's create a variable for that entry for that destination. Let's do set destination equals link. And then we called it link destination. And because this is an entries field, it will give us an array of entries, even though there's only one. So once again, we have to do dot one. And then down here in the actual link tag or anchor tag, we can type destination dot URL to get that entries URL. So let's go ahead and check this out. Great, so we have the text for both of them coming through and this one goes to stories. We were already on stories. Let's go to home and try it. This one goes to stories and this one goes to our gear. So one more piece for the navigation that would be nice is if these had an active state, if you were on that page or in that section. So it's a little complicated just because for stories, for example, we have a stories listing page and that is slash stories. But when you click into a story, the URL is slash stories slash the slug for that particular story. So we can't just check for the whole URL and match that for this links URL. We have to check for the first segment of the URL. So here's the website's base URL. And this is the first segment of the URL after that. So we can check for that and match because that will work on single pages that only have one level, our gear, but that'll also work for multiple levels where this story is in the story section, but we're just checking for this first segment here to match it for this link. So let's go ahead and write that code. So let's make a little space here and we'll create a new variable here called active link. And for this, we're going to get the current request or the current page that we're on. We're going to get that page's URL information. So we have to type craft.app.request. And then we want to get a segment of the URL. So we'll type segment, segments, and then we'll get the first one. So once again, if we're on a page with two levels, like this has, it'll get the first segment there. If we're on a page with only one level, we will get the first segment after the base URL. So we want to check, we're going to set active link to true if the first segment of the URL equals the destination URI. So this link's destination or this uh, link's URI would be stories. Uh, this link's URI would be our hyphen gear. So if that's true, then we want to add a class onto the navigation link. So we will say if active link, nav link active, we'll just add this class on here. Let's test it out. So we're on the Our Gear page and this lights up. We're on the Stories Listing page and this lights up. And we are on a Stories Detail page and this still lights up. So that's perfect. And when we go to the home page, nothing lights up. So the last thing we'll do in this video is make the footer text editable in Craft. So let's go to Settings, Globals, and let's create one more global set called footer. And we'll create a new tab here in the field layout area called content. 
you can name this anything you want. This is really just for any of these tabs in the field layout, you can name whatever you want. It just is something that's helpful for the person editing content so they know what they're editing. So in here, we're just going to reuse the same rich text field that we use in a few other places. So we'll add this to the footer global set and save. And then let's go to our template, the index.twig, the main index.twig file. Let's go to the footer and we'll get rid of this content. And we will say footer because that's our new global set name dot rich text. So if we save this and refresh, we lose our footer text and now we can go into craft and we can go to globals. Now we have our header and our footer. So we'll put it right in here and save and refresh the website. And there you go. We now have footer text back in there. The header navigation is fully editable in craft and the footer is editable. And that is all for this video. Thanks for watching.